It's the Dosinco Project. Money pouring in, clientele growing down. With your host, Dosinco. Let's go! What up, everybody? You are now tuned into the Dosinco Project, where we talk about business, entertainment, motivation, and mindset. We have some legends in the building with us today. This father and son dynamic duo has gone on to win multiple world championship titles in the sport of boxing at two weight classes. The WBA, WBC, Ring Magazine, Lineal Light Welterweight title, the WBC Welterweight title, and so much more. The record stands at 37 wins, three losses, with 21 coming from knockout. Opponents include Zab Judah, Amir Khan, Lucas Matisse, Errol Spence, Lamont Peterson, Eric Morales, so on and so forth. They've marked their names in the history books by being the first Latino world champion coming out of Philadelphia and was recently recognized as the 2022 most influential Latino by Philadelphia 6 ABC. On top of that, They manage multiple businesses. They have a clothing brand, boxing promotional company, barbershop, boxing gym, apartment complexes, event spaces, mansions with palms. Can I borrow a dollar? (laughs) Everybody, please welcome Danny and Angel Garcia. How y'all doing today? (laughs) How y'all doing today, sir? Blessed, blessed, blessed. Let let me tell you, well, first and foremost, thank you so much for this. Y'all blessed me the first time I did a Kadan TV episode when y'all was pretty much on the come up. And I had to get y'all back on, man. So I appreciate y'all. Thank you, Um, bro. Jeez, Kadan TV, what was that, like 13 years ago? It was like 13 years ago, man. 13 years ago, man. This is back when you was just, time flies when you haven't. We all still look young. (laughs) We out here still looking good. Bird, man, look. You know? (laughs) So, so what I want to, what first and foremost, I want to give you your flowers because your last fight was spectacular. Your last fight really showed me that you were back. And the only reason why I say that is one of my favorite fights that you've had was the Lucas Matisse fight. Mm-hmm. And that's because I seen you as an all-around fighter during that time, right? And then there was obviously a period where, to me, I felt as though, and again, this is just me looking from the outside in because I don't know the way boxers are mm-hmm. mentally, physically, right. and so forth. But I will say that uh, this recent fight really showed me you were back on your game with the way you fought. You fought a spectacular fight. Right. And on top of that, you had me tearing up, man. So let's talk about let's talk about that fight. What happened? What 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 clicked for you? Well, for me, I feel like um, like you said, I've been doing this for a while. So I've been in big all big fights like my career, especially the last ten years. Like starting from Americon, so yep. like my last fight, all world championship fights, mm. ten world title fights. You know, big champion. So I just feel like I needed a break. Honestly, okay. I felt like I was a little bit tired of. Not boxing, but I just felt like I was just mine, mine. Yeah, I'm mentally tired. Like yeah. I just needed a break. So I felt like I needed that long layoff, that nineteen month layoff. And during that time I was just trying to find myself, you know, mm. just see what makes me happy. Right. You know, because I already had the money, I got the mm. like you said, the cars, the mansions, everything everything was going perfect for me. Right. Um, and just looking, just trying to find being happy again, just waking up and being grateful, really. Mm-hmm. Like right. and that's what really like dawned on me. So but what really made me want to really get back in there was um, I was in L.A. and I was with my friend. And I was with my friend um, Knox. And we was going down the um, escalator. We was in the mall. Okay. And I was like, damn, man, I used to dream about fighting for millions. I used to dream about fighting for millions of dollars mm-hmm. when I was a kid. Like, there's, million, there's kids in the world who will love to fight for millions of dollars. True. And I was like, and I'm in that position and I don't want to do it. Mm. So I was like, now that I could, now that where I want, where I want to be in my life, and I got the opportunity to take advantage of making a lot of money, I don't want to do it. Wow. So I went down, and I was like, you know what? I'm fighting. I'm Ooh. coming back, and I'm gonna come. I change my whole mindset. Like I'm gonna wake up, no matter how shitty I feel. I'm gonna wake up happy. I'm gonna go running happy. I'm gonna drive to the gym happy, and everything I do, no matter how my brain tries to mess with me, right. I'm gonna force mm-hmm. myself to be happy. I love it. And and that was just my mindset. Every day I'm just going to be happy, happy. And I think that was why I look so good because mm-hmm. I was happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, that, and, 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 that, and it was yep. just a yeah. great, great performance. Like I felt oh, good. Yeah. I had fun in there. I, I was in it. here having fun. I love it, man. I love it. Describe, right? Because also 
Angel. I call him yeah. Theo, y'all, because yeah. obviously he's my uncle. So yeah, I always call. So cool. when y'all hear me referencing him as yeah. Theo, that's because that's not that's, my nickname. Yeah. It's not his nickname. <laughs> okay, so I don't want to hear y'all nah, calling nah. him that. Yeah, don't call me Theo. Call me the Bird Man. <laughs> Crazy Angel, the Bird Man. So, so both of you, I think we've all had bouts of, you know, mental health issues. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, just overall, everybody has oh, gone yeah, through stuff, right. right? Describe what it feels like to be in the dark place sometimes. Because well, a lot of people, you yeah. know, they don't even know if they are in the dark place no, or not. Yeah. Describe, describe those things. You don't feel feelings. happy? You don't feel like doing nothing? Talk, talking to the mic. Yeah, my fault, brother. brother. No, my fault, fault, my fault, brother. My fault. <laughs> I don't want no problem. <laughs> well, it feels like you're in darkness. Nothing attracts you. Everything, you don't feel like, you don't want to do nothing. You don't want to go out. You don't want to go, you don't want to do nothing. It's like darkness. It's like a black mm -hmm. cloud following you around. Wake up in the morning, you feel lazy, tired. Like, everything's like your brain is just beat up. Right. So it's a, it's an ugly place to be at. Okay. You know, it's just know how to handle that. It's like, you mm -hmm. know, you got to say to yourself, you, first of all, you got to believe in the big man. Mm -hmm. Without the big man, it's nothing. First, you got to get up and say, Lord, thank you, my Lord, I love you. Help me through this. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's spiritually. That's mm -hmm. why people get stuck. People get stuck because they don't know how to get out of it. Got you. And that's the whole thing. When Danny was going through that, we would leave the gym. He would be sparring in here. We would, he would not do great. But some days, you know, when he's sparring, he don't do great. Right, right. So, but sometimes my grade yeah. is good. You know? No, you're but right. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. But you know, you're yeah. there, you're not, you know, when you're you, sharp. You, you know like, what you your know best it, is. Yeah, it's like, exactly. yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Not even like, like on an off day, you can have an off day, but still know that you're there. Like tomorrow's going to be better. Mm -hmm. But that, it, it didn't feel like that for me. Yeah, so it right just felt now. like I was stuck. Like I just exactly. I knew I wasn't going like I knew I was gonna come back here the next day and feel right. the same shit. So wow. I would yeah. ask him on the way home, I wouldn't ask him in here. I would, you know, on my way home, I would talk to him. Mm -hmm. And I would say, yo, what's wrong? Like, what's going on? He would just start crying. Mm. So I knew something. Right, right. I think we all go through yeah. that, man. There's been times where, you know, and I know it ain't all about me, y'all, but I'm gonna share it anyway. No, you're right. right? Everybody so goes it, through right. it. Everybody goes through it, man. There's times yes. where sometimes you can be by yourself, right? Your kids, especially when you got it's kids. It's a lonely right? spot. It's a lonely spot. Yeah. And you could go downstairs. I'm in the basement mm -hmm. bawling, crying on the treadmill. Oh, yeah. Don't know why, just crying. Yeah. Right. Then I come upstairs with a big old smile on my face. Kids don't even know what's no, going on. You don't want to show your you don't want to show what you're going through. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. But I feel like it's always like, a lot of people don't know what makes them feel that way. Like you have to figure out what makes you feel that way. And once you figure out what makes you feel that way, then you can work on just being a better way. Like you can work on tomorrow, but it's like sometimes you get stuck in that spot and it's, you just don't like yeah, what, like something triggers it and then you just don't even know after that, you don't even know what causes it. Oh wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, right, right. So it was like, you have to know what makes you feel that way. Mm -hmm. And to me, I already know what it was yep. like after, after, after I got happy again, and then mm -hmm. I'll get sad again, yep. I'm like, all right, it was just probably the pressure from boxing. That's what got me. Wow. It yeah, was boxing. It, it was boxing that made me feel like that, yeah, yeah, to but be it, honest. Because I've been doing it for so long. Yeah. Mm. Well, I've been doing it for so long, and like the money and all that, that don't fix it. Right. It's just like you got to change your mindset. And once I was able to learn how to change my mindset and re recoup, mm -hmm. then I knew that I could, I could, be, I could be the best. Yeah, again. but imagine this, Daryl. Imagine you got to go into a place in a ring. Going in from a square like this, mm -hmm. 20 by 20, ring, and knowing the other guy on that side ready to kick your ass. Not kick your ass, he's ready to kill you. Mm -hmm. It's a gladiator sport. Right. So I understand his, his, his behalf of what, what probably triggers it, because a lot of people won't do this. Right. Because everybody wants to fight, Daryl, until you say, I'll meet you outside. Right. And then you're telling your homie, yo, you want to stop this or what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You really gonna let me go out there to fight? <laughs> it wasn't right. really the fighting though. No, I know, but I'm just it's saying. Like I'm just talking the every the day. Yeah. The every day, like no, you're every right. day, waking up, pushing yourself, doing this, and, mm -hmm. and the pressure of fame. Sometimes too. you look at your bank account, you're like, Yo, why I'm doing this? Right. Yeah. You feel me? It's like mm -hmm. that too. It's like you're forcing yeah. yourself to do it. No, don't blame the you money. Know? <laughs> no, I'm not blaming the money. I'm just saying. <laughs> Give it to me. Right. 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 <laughs> no, I it's the truth. Daddy, though. It's the pressures. Yeah, yeah. It's not in the bottle. You know, it's like. Like Marvin Hagler said it the best, it's like, you know, it's hard to Daddy. wake up in the morning when you wake up with Silk Road. You yeah, know? that's true. You're right. I told Danny, Danny, is that one more fight? Give me all the money. <laughs> Get a purse back to you. Get a purse to you. No, I pay the taxes. <laughs> so, but it, it all oh, comes, but it all comes down to just being grateful, being in yeah, this position. Yeah, exactly. Like, I can't take, I can never, be, I can life, never take man. for granted where I'm at now mm. and everything that got me here. You feel Hell, me? And man. I think that's what happened. Like, I just got tired of everything. And mm -hmm. but how am I tired of like what I got? You feel me? Like this right. is everything I ever wanted.
So when now I'm just in, enjoying it. When he was it. a kid, we I'm were, being happy and I'm taking advantage of it. Right. When he was a kid, like he spoke when he first started, you know, speaking about the little kids and all. Man, he fought for medals, man. And you fight hard. Right? We were fighting for medals. I say we, because when Danny's in the ring, I'm, yeah, I'm in there spiritually with him. with him. Right. So a lot of people, how you know how to separate the father from but the But even training? that, that's a lot of pressure too. Remember, mm -hmm. I've been doing, I took a lot of pressure when I was young. Since 10 because years it was do or die. Right. Yeah. You got to understand, if you don't do it, your life mm -hmm. never changes. Yeah. Like that was my mindset. Mm. If I don't do this, none of my family's life changes. We're just going to be the same and my kid's kid is going to be the same, same. It's never going to change. You were doing so that. it's bigger than just boxing. Well, you were doing, doing that right. all throughout. Destiny. Yeah, it's bigger than boxing. Right, this is yeah. changing people's lives. Generation. Right. right. Like people, I'm and paying not... people. Like <clears throat> this is my kids' kids. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's so not... it's like, it's not just boxing. You feel me? No, it's like when that all right. that pressure's on one person, yeah. to change it, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, no matter who's there, I got to go in there and make it happen. Yeah. Me, Danny Garcia. You and it's me? not only uh, the family. It's, we got people that work for us now. They mm -hmm. got family. They got four or five kids. They're depending of us. Like. Like, they you know, when you start guys. making money and you start growing in, in, in the world, like, you know, start growing like to yourself. Yep. Like, you get not one bill, you got 50 bills now. Yeah, it's true. Like, she get tougher. So, mm -hmm. if you're not here, if people, the people that run companies and all that, they got to be 100% here. Because you deal with hundreds and hundreds of people. Because you do the same. You deal with hundreds and hundreds of, not hundreds, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. true. I deal Probably with a lot hundreds of people. Of people. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I deal with a lot of And people. if you're not here mentally, people say to me, Man, you got the easiest job. You point finger. I say, Papa, I got the hardest job. Right. I say, if you want my job, you won't last a week. Mm -hmm. When I leave my house, my day never goes the way I plan because I get detracted. I get tracked to other distracted, places. Yeah. Distracted. Well, you got you got yeah. a lot of tenants. You got a lot no, of. No, you're right. But I get phone calls, right. and then I only go from this to that. It's like when I texted you a couple of days ago. I yeah. thought it was the, the broadcast. Yeah, you thought day. it was last week, right? Yeah, because right. I thought yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Cause I got so much in my mind, you said I'll let you. You know. just told him Friday. He like whichever Friday come up. No, no, the, the, one. <laughs> <laughs> the closest one. <laughs> it's the truth. No, you're right, and you gotta be here mentally. Mm -hmm. Because people don't see you here; they see weakness, they see uh, opportunities. Yeah, that's true. So people are gonna look at you as a victim. Hmm. When you start, when you start being in the spotlight of, 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 of people, that you start being like people look at you, your target. Yeah. And it's scary, Daryl, believe mm -hmm. it or not. No, I believe it, man. It's they look scary because, especially on social media, cause they really think they know you. They look at you like food, too. No, they look mm -hmm. at you as a ticket. Yeah. Man, I know, I ain't gonna mention names, but I know friends of ours that they got scammed, like for 200,000, 100,000. Man, you wanna hear a crazy story? Like, talk, Daryl, put in the them to sleep. I'm sitting in the barbershop yes. the other day. I'm sitting in the barbershop the other day, right? Mm -hmm. And <clears> the guy <throat> walks in, he's like, I just came from the gym. And then he sees me, he's like, I went to the gym because I didn't see you in there, so I came over here. He started showing me this movie and all that. He was talking about you want to invest 300K and all that. I'm like, bro, I don't know you from a can of paint. Hey, yeah, they're crazy. So it was like, no. I don't even know you. You asked me for $300,000? Yeah. It's crazy, man. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So same way he asked me that is the same way I had to tell him. Yeah, It's absolutely. like, bro, I don't know you from a can of paint. Yeah. I don't even know you. I don't even know about the movie business. Right. So I don't right. even invest in things I don't know about. Yeah. So, and it's like, if I give you 300000 what am I going to get back? Yeah, that's so true. Probably nothing. Yep. Yeah, you'll never see a dime back. Or it's like, okay, I'm not. I'm, no, I'm not gonna double my money. Right. But I'm gonna make what, ten thousand or twenty thousand? You ain't making nothing. Exactly. Exactly. So it's like I'm doing the math in my head the whole mm -hmm. time I'm talking to him. Yeah, zero. And I'm like, okay, where does money going? Mm -hmm. I don't even know like going who you to his are. Bank account. You feel me? So it's like this shit is wild out here, man. Remember when we, when we, when you, I don't even have the heart to ask somebody for that type of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah tough, but there's people out there that have the heart. Yep, yep. One time we had a guy come in here. And he said to me and Danny, he said, uh, sign this. Walked in and said, sign this. And we looked. At sign this. Sign. What I don't know what he It was a contract. Man, being a I've, I've been going through some. Like, 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 we just going to sign it. To be honest, I, sometimes I feel like I'm too nice. You know why? Because the, the nice, shit that people send me. Like, well, he's, he's this, probably got like a nice demeanor. Yeah, I'm the same yeah, way. Yeah, I'm yeah, a nice no, person. No, I'm no, what it is, yeah, 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 like I the shit it. that people send me and then I read it and then I go over it. I'm like, bro, I would never have the heart to send somebody this shit. Like, this is a total rip off. Like they think, yeah, they figure because you nice, they be like, okay, no, kindness yeah, for weakness. Nice no, think, it's not yeah. even that. People will really try to take everything. Like people yeah. will try oh, to yeah, get they his, want everything. Yeah, yeah, it's like but they don't think you're not my like me. You give me the the first wrong impression is like this is wrong. Is like yo, you, I'm never talking to you again. Right. It's like I don't care how much money you got. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Bro, listen, it's like people. You go to Instagram, you got people that say, pay for this, pay for this, teach you how to flip homes. 
yeah, they're going to teach you. I could teach you that too. I'm very good at it. Yeah. yeah. But the question you got to ask is, how am I going to get the money to buy the property? Mm -hmm. That's yep. the loophole. And you done paid somebody $5,000, $10,000 yeah. no, to they, teach Yeah, you're right, because mm -hmm. they don't charge a... They don't charge uh three hundred dollars. They charge thirty five to five grand. Yeah, on one on one. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah, exactly. That's so nice. they living on people like people's dreams. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people out there scam artists. No, I agree. And that that's the scary part. Like when you call me that you had to, the contractors in your house. Yeah. And I told you, Daryl, you ever get a contract with somebody like me? If I get a contract to do anything, mm -hmm. I tell them like this. Listen. If you don't have if you don't have the money for the for the supplies, I buy it. Yep. You get the job started. When you get halfway, I give you half of the money for the for the labor. And then just move it that way. Yeah. Because a lot of people really think you're gonna cut checks. So when you cut a check for somebody, it's like you cut me a check and I ain't put a screw in, you pay me to do nothing. So now now you work for me. Yep. I don't work for you no more. Until that work gets so done. So now you got to chase me around. Now I'm going to come up at 10 o'clock no, in the morning. No, it's the truth. It's the yeah. truth. So people need to know this. No, it, it, absolutely. Yeah. It's the truth. So you guys out there, don't cut checks. You get a contractor, you buy a supply, you tell them when you get halfway done, I'll give you the other half, the first half. And then when you get done, I'll give you the rest. Don't cut checks. And now if you cut checks, you work for them. They don't work for you. That's so true. But now you got to chase them. So... No, that's fine. Don't forget. <laughs> now, there you go. Now, now. From the bird man. Now, now you're getting you it from the bird man, but that's ah. also fatherly advice too, right? Oh, yeah. Now, let's, let's, let's jump into the dynamic duo, father and son, right? Y'all got a unique relationship. And what I mean by that is mm -hmm. not too many father sons yeah. behave the way y'all behave. Oh, you right. As far as the closeness, right? Oh, yeah. Y'all go to the clubs together. Y'all yeah. go to the gas stations together. friends. Y'all in the gym together. Y'all yeah. basically friends. Yeah. Describe what, how you guys have got... Describe that dynamic, the chemistry. Yeah. Describe that. Well, the first thing I, I had to learn was how to separate Danny being a kid again. So True. I didn't have to give him nookies. <laughs> <laughs> I got to watch him now. <laughs> you got to watch him. I'm his dad like, now. Yeah, like a child. <laughs> what? We go to the club. They be like, yo, you want this? I'm like, no, nah, I'm watching him. <laughs> I got to drive back. He's like, I'm good, night. bro. Next thing you know, he passed out in the front seat. Throwing up in the Miami, side of the car. We dropping in the middle of the highway. I got crazy footage of him throwing up <laughs> in the highways and all that shit. <laughs> He had a, he had a, uh, he had a, um, uh, what's that shit you had on? Oh, the, uh, so, so like a, like the a velour? No, no like he had a, thing uh, sweat. oh, yeah, the yeah. Girl, that, no, the thing is the girls wearing the make skinny. Oh, again. A oh. waist trainer. <laughs> you had a waist trainer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't know what a waist trainer is. He was trying to make stump, <laughs> tuck his stump again. He took that shit off. I was trying to cut up. Uh, <laughs> you had Dude, a That's trainer. the funny way. Wait till I show you this video. Yo, yo. Fool over, fool over. So, so yeah, yeah, I gotta watch. Yeah, it wasn't Long easy, but we learned how to separate that. Okay. And the most important thing is a father and a son relationship. You gotta respect each other. Mm -hmm. It's all about respect. Like every say, day, say a little closer yeah, to the mom. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm just cool. picking up on the on the. No, it's cool. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, I'm just so looking at the vibe. The most important thing, Daryl, is respect. Mm -hmm. Like we, we go. Sometimes we have days where we, you know, we disagree. Yep. We get on each other's nerves, but. By the end of that night, we happy again. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's far we from We never perfect. go to bed mad at each other, bro. We, it's not perfect. Like, yeah, we not think, perfect. Like, we don't yeah. argue. We argue all the time. No, yeah. yeah. And we sometimes disagree. He crosses, disagree. Sometimes he crossed the line, yeah. like, because he's my pop. He feel like he could do that. Yeah, but you know, I, I, say, I say just, you know, don't um take, like, uh, what's the right word? It's like when you... Don't take him too serious. No, I was like, don't take it. All right. Take things, not granted, but it's another word. Don't like, take you know, it too personal. You know when you with somebody every day and it's like a natural routine and oh, you just yeah. feel like you could do whatever you want? Yeah, don't take it for granted. Don't take advantage of the situation. Like, yeah. No, no. no. I, I, the word Are you saying in. like don't don't take life for granted? No, no, oh. no. It's just like, just because you my son don't mean you could do certain oh, things. Oh, like you could overstep your bounds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I know what you're talking about. No, exactly. it makes sense. It makes sense. Right. So, so right now there's a situation going on, and I'm not getting into it like with regards to the gossip, but yeah. right now what's big news is, you know, the the issues that 50 Cent is having with his son, right? Oh, yeah. Do you believe that a lot of a lot of what goes on, and I'm not saying that particular situation, but a lot of people have are going through that. Yeah. Do you believe that a lot of times the other parent can really affect a child situation with their parent, with their with their father, like a father. Oh, you saying like your wife would talk yeah, shit yeah. to your son, or not? Yeah, or yeah, baby, or your mom would talk shit. If he's with his mom, then she gonna well, get in his head. If she's that type of mom, mm -hmm. you feel me? Or if yeah. not, 
You feel me? I don't know. But you gotta understand. I mean, Fifty Cent was probably busy. You know, he's a he's a busy man. He's right. Like he had a career. Right? Well, what was the situation? It was a child support thing, so right? The, yeah, it was, the a, it was a child support. A lot of child support. Yeah, it was a child support situation. But then you also had circumstances where you know he was pretty much talking bad about his dad. And a lot of people felt as though he was picking up the energy of his mom. Yeah, see, because that's he was raised around. You're not supposed to talk bad about your pop. Right, especially that's not, not in public. Especially like in the, to the world. No, you're like, right, that's, right. Yeah, no. Your family problems stay at home. Yeah. Yep. And yep. then it's like, if no, 50 right. say something back, it's like you kind of ask for that. Exactly. Yeah. You, know? you feel me? And at, at the end of the day, you can't ever count on by his money. At that's the end true. of the day, that's your dad, but mm-hmm. he don't got to give you his money. Right. That's his money. Mm-hmm. He get he, he got to pay for that. He got to exactly. pay you whatever the the, yeah. court, the law say. Yeah. yeah. If the law says is two thousand a month. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. I think his was sixty yeah. seven hundred, right? Sixty. Which well, is like a I lot. heard he was paying five hundred thousand a year at one particular time, and she wanted more. Right. Well, it was I think it was like fifty thousand a, a month, and, and she wanted more, and so he went to child support, and they cut it down to sixty mm-hmm. seven hundred. Right. Yeah. That's five hundred thousand, yeah. a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, Listen, yeah. You know I mean, like, you gotta understand, sixty seven hundred dollars is a lot of money. Oh, that's so a, absolutely. Sixty seven hundred, I pay my rent, I pay my my Bentley, and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> dog, you know my mom. You know how much my father. Just never count nobody else's money. You be how much right. your father? My father had mom? four children. My mama. He had my mom had three boys and one daughter. Okay. His mom. Yep. My father divorced my mom. They were legally married at the time. My mom moved to America. Okay. When I was five years old, you know how much they offer my mom for child support? How much? At that time, in the '60s, '70s. How much? Ten bucks a month for ten, ten bucks yeah, a month for four children. Wow. And you know what my mom said? What the boss supposed to do with that? Wow. You could leave that with the sun don't shine. Yeah, you keep that. I don't Imagine want that. that. Yeah, that's crazy, man. So you Imagine about- that. Right. Yeah, that's nuts. So you gotta number one, never count nobody else. Yeah, but you gotta under, you also gotta understand that. Right. Daryl. Real rap. Daryl, you also gotta understand that family secrets are family secrets. Yeah, I just mm-hmm. hate that. Everybody family. has family secrets. Not bad ones. Right, right. Some people have horror secrets. Some people got regular secrets, but you don't that's why you never bring everybody to your house. Everybody is smiling your face, not your friend. Mm-hmm. So by them exposing that on Instagram or social media, they probably doing it to jack up their Instagram. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Probably to get, I don't know, more fans, I guess, more followers. Right. Because these days, females are showing a bunch of ads for fucking likes and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's you know all for saying? So I don't know if it's social media, like a kahuna, you know what I'm saying? But the point is, you never talk shit about your family because you might have to eat the shit in the future. Because mm. you don't know he might need from uh, 50 one day because life ain't promised. Nope, you're right. You're so right. anything could happen, Daryl. And you only get one pop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I would never, listen, my father never gave me nothing. Mm. And I loved my dad when he died. Mm-hmm. And my father never gave me nothing. And the, the weird shit is that I love that nigga. Mm. Can I say nigga? You say whatever you want, oh, okay. brother. We're going to get to that. <laughs> We're going to get to that. No. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. What I, what, I, what, I love, what I love about you, right, is that you have such a youthful spirit about you, right? So y'all will be in the club turning up. And don't take this the wrong no, way. No, no, it's cool, Daryl. Speak up, brother. I'm going to say it again. Don't take yeah, this yeah, the wrong no, way. Yeah, you know, it's cool. They got you I labeled. Take, okay, based off of, I listen. I never take none personally. Based, based off of age, you technically known as a senior citizen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's a good thing. But, but, I mean, but, but listen, but listen, but you have redefined, you yeah. have redefined what senior Gravity citizenship take. is, right? <laughs> Because you have proven that age has no limit. Nah, Darryl, Disco- Darryl. Why? Daryl, I worked hard, Daryl. Okay. I worked hard. I deserved to treat myself, Daryl. Mm-hmm. I see older guys like myself, and they fucked up. Mm. And they, they financially okay, but fucked up because their brain had just been smashed by their female wifey or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. You got a female beating you over the head that you ugly and fat. And she over there getting trans stamps and shit. And she getting a belly button earring. Mm. And she bashed you as a guy. She bashed you and called the ugly so long. Your self esteem is fucked up. Mm. Now you hit her name. Now you look fucked up because she told you fucked up. Right. Listen, brother. I, I'm, I'm. I know my age, so that's that. Want to make that clear yeah, to everybody. Right. I'm no young boy. I know my age. Yep. But I also don't try to dress too young. Mm-hmm. I know my limit. I know how to dress black on black and all that shit. I try to cover up in the club. I can't be with the rainbow colors and right, shit. Right. 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 You know what I'm saying? Right. One time I had to step in. Though. One time I did shit. had to step in. For real? I'm like, oh here. Take it easy, bro. You're not, you're not gonna die tomorrow. <laughs> what what was it? What, what, what Remember, was you was like? acting like you was acting crazy at one time. I'm like, you gotta chill, bro. <laughs> nah, he said that we went to a party. In bro, New he, York. he, he, like, he was going was too hard. Right. He I was, ain't gonna mention who was there, but it was uh, a lot of celebrities. No, nah, not that. Okay. I'm just saying. Uh, and I'm saying just like, overall. Yeah, like he was just partying hard. Like uh, I'm like, bro. I'm like, bro. Take it easy, bro. He was partying like he gonna die tomorrow. 
<laughs> I'm like, you're not gonna die tomorrow, bro. Just slow it down a little bit. You're gonna he be okay. His life. He yeah. His life. No doubt. Listen. I think he's just making up for all the lost time in his life. That's no doubt. You, you gotta understand this that life ain't promised, like I said earlier. And then yeah. when you got some money, he's like, you, you ask, and that people, got access like, to anything. So Darryl, people not gonna know you for the bad times <laughs> of your life. That's true. People gonna remember you for the good time. When you mad, when you in pain, do people suffer with you? No, you suffer by yourself. Exactly. Pain is by you. You suffer in your own. Mm-hmm. When people don't feel your pain, but when you laugh, you laugh in groups. People mm. laugh with you. Mm. Because that's the people gonna know you for the happy time. If you tell me right now, yo, Theo, I got a headache, I'm gonna be like, all right, Daryl, you got a headache, take two Tylenols. That's it. And I'm gonna keep rolling. Mm-hmm. I say, I pray for you, Daryl, mm-hmm. but I don't feel your pain. You might have chronic pain. I don't know. I don't feel your pain. Right. That's how it's looked at. You gotta look at life like that, Daryl. Mm. Life ain't promised, Daryl. That's so true. I'm telling you, you gotta enjoy your life to the day you die. Cause think about it, right? You could be 90 and still have fun. It's about having fun no, the proper PG. way. His the age, proper way. He taught me that like age ain't really nothing but a number. It ain't. It ain't. Cause to like him. I saw somebody like who was older than my pop. He had 20 girls with him. He was a billionaire. Wow. Old white guy from Canada. Mm-hmm. Phil Young. He I looked don't young. Say his name. He had a Louis Vuitton bucket on. White dude, white hair. And he spent $35,000 in the club and bottles. Didn't drink one bottle. Had one cup in his hand. Had 20 hard. girls with him. He just enjoying himself. Darryl. Yeah, he was like, because, I, you know, I got money in the stock market. Right, right, right. So I was telling him, like, yo, damn, my shit down, like, 10%. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, the and he was like, yeah, I lost, I lost $10 million next week. I mean, last week. He was like, I lost, yeah, I lost half. Well, it's down 10 million. But right, he's right. lost because yeah, if you take it out, if you take it out tomorrow, like, it's a loss. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but. He's, yeah, he lost 10 million, but you're praying on for the recovery, but yep. long story short, but uh, yeah, he, he was just smiling and having fun, and then I was like, oh shit, he made me feel happy, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. so it was yeah. like, he taught me a valuable lesson, it's like, yo, you gotta just be happy. And enjoy your day. Yeah, no matter, yeah, matter. yeah. so knowledge. he was, you know, he was an older mm-hmm. man, he was older than my pop, he had 20 girls with him, he spent 35,000, and he lost 10 million the week before. And That's he crazy. was still happy. And he was happy, happy living life. Wow. Because he know life ain't promised. That's true. Yeah. And the thing is, you got also got to pass the knowledge. Do what makes over. you happy, because people always gonna yeah. say, people like, always gonna say, oh, you too old, you too young, you too this, you too that. They always set limits. But it's like, uh, yeah, but it's like whatever you like, you do that, yeah, bro. Dark, if, if you, you ain't hurting nobody, then you yeah. cool. Yeah. Because if you stop doing what you love, then you're listening to the people that want you to stop. So now you listen to them. Mm. So now you start dreaming because they felt some type of way. No, right. you can, as long as nobody put their hands on you physically mm-hmm. and try to hurt you or your family, or your children, right. you're good. As long as nobody try to put their hands on you, you can have all the fun in the world the proper way. Yeah. You know, respectful, other people. Yep. Like, you know, not being crazy, you know, yeah, respectful, everything, respect. No, I And you can have all the fun in the world. Because, no, listen, age only but a number. I was 33 for a long time. Mm. Now describe. What do you mean by that? Like meaning, when I was thirty-eight, I was thirty-three. Uh, <laughs> when I was when I was forty, I was thirty-three. You a mean, long time. From like a mental standpoint. No, like from? people ask me how old you are. Oh, you talk, okay, Then I got come you. to find out in the Quran, mm-hmm. you know the Quran, yeah, yeah, the Muslim yeah. uh, mm-hmm. um, Quran, it says when you will go to heaven, you know, in their in their belief, yep. is you'll be thirty-three for, for your eternity. Ah. So look what a coincidence. So you was just using yeah. that. Yeah, no, I never knew that. I just found that out. Mm. Yeah. So you still believe so in 33? So when you die in the Quran, it says that you will go to the heavens. Yeah, yeah. But you will be 33, your age of 33. And you live you for you eternal live. life. Mm. Imagine that. Dang. The threes, threes, threes are a great All number. All three. You still believe in no, 33? No, threes are a very lucky number. You're 33? Threes. Yeah, I'm 33. All yeah. right. Listen, I'll take the it. But think about it. No, no. But, yeah. but listen, it, it's, it's, it's facts, right? Because think about it, right? Let's just say, for instance, a typical person's lifespan is 80 years old, right? Let's just no, say no, 80. No. Let's mm-hmm. just say 80, right? Let's yeah. just put 80 out there. Yeah. 75. Let's put yeah. 75, right? Well, a man is 73. A woman is 76. Okay, let's say 76. 73. Technically, and I'm not putting your age out there, but no. technically, how old are you? Like you want my well, you thirty three. Well, you thirty three. I'm, I'm almost. I'm almost late fifties. Okay, you, so you late you fifty. Okay, so you yeah. late fifty. Let's just say twenty. You got. I'm 20. not embarrassed about it. No, no, no. Get. Let's just say twenty more <laughs> I'm years. I'm not happy about it. Basically. No, right. I don't think any <laughs> of us time are. Is <laughs> time is undefeated. <laughs> time is undefeated. Time is undefeated. No, you right. If you're young, you're gonna no, go one day. No, you're right. You, you, you can't. Everybody's gonna be there. That's no, true. you're right. You can't stop time. You can't. But you can make up for it. Yes, you can. Yeah, that's, that's the, true. That's, that's, I like that. that. No, you're right. <laughs> yeah. But think about it. You got 20 more years on this earth. If we're well, looking at just the no, 70 right. something, right? Yeah. Listen, 20 if more, I give that's myself it. 10, I'm happy. Mm. If you I live, give myself 10, because shit ain't promised. But you lived it up. 
No, you yeah, well, uh, So, speak so I, believe it or not, that I had fun. You got to speak. Yeah. I had a dream. My dream was to see Danny become world champion. I he seen did. that. My daughters are grown females when I had cancer. Mm -hmm. When I had cancer, yep, I had yep, throat yep. cancer. Stage four, my daughters were four years old. And my dream was to see them become females. Mm. Like grown, grown, grown women right now. Right. I've seen that. You've seen it all. Yeah, I've seen that. I raised my kids. I did my job. Mm -hmm. I don't owe nobody nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready to go if it comes. They, right. party, they party more than that. Oh, wait. I know they they <laughs> blow <it> right now. <laughs> they living party, it up. They worse than him. <laughs> so I had to get him a ticket to come. Let's talk. I was like, yo, y'all coming home? So <laughs> they I don't want to come back home. No, I booked them a ticket tomorrow. They'll be back tomorrow. So, um, so you got a new daughter. Yeah. Palace. What what made you give her that name? Easy. I was born in the hood. She was born in the palace. Mm. <laughs> That's, simple. That's simple. You feel me? Yeah. How does it feel raising? Plus, two? I like giving my kids different names. Yeah. I don't like traditional stuff. Mm -hmm. Like if I ever had a boy, I'm not gonna name him Danny Garcia. Right. Number one, my shoes are too big to fill. Mm -hmm. There will never be another Danny Garcia. And I want to give my kids their own identity. I like that. Like I want my kids to be the only one. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like they probably gonna hate their names, and when they're young, but when they get older, they're gonna love them. Yeah, no, I like that. I you know hated I mean? my name. Like Philly, she wanted to be called uh, Derek. Danica, Danica. Dan she went in my, her, my name yeah. and her mom's name put together. <laughs> she even changed my. Now, but now she's Philly Danica. again. She's yeah. like, no, I love Philly. I love Philly. <laughs> no, so so you got you got two daughters. Um, describe, especially in the world today, where you're heavily on social media, as far right. as you know, you expand. Um, you know, how how is it raising your daughter under 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 a new society, new yeah, world, new world. right? Mm -hmm. Well, one thing me and my daughter have, like, mm -hmm. she's only seven, but I speak to her like a grown-up. Okay. Like, she'll come to me like, Dad, what is this? Why is this person doing that? And I'll mm -hmm. just tell her, you know, yo, Phil, this is the person doing that because of that. You feel me? Right. Like, I, I'm shooting it straight to her. Mm -hmm. Like, because you can get easily influenced on her mm -hmm. and easily tricked. You know what I mean? Like, Got you. it's like... Everything's crazy. Like you could, it's not crazy, but you could be whatever you want to yeah. be. That's so and true. And people out here really being whatever they want to be. Like it yeah. don't, there's no limits to you want to be. Uh -huh. So I gotta just, um, you know, she might see somebody smoking or something. Like no, mm -hmm. Phil, you don't do that. You know, yeah. I gotta. You gotta or you, she might well, see no, something. That's your health. You don't like, want when you mess your health. Right. You that's, know. So yeah. I, um, I ain't gonna lie. I kind of don't like it. My daughter being on social media. I don't. Mm -hmm. So I was so happy when they deleted her TikTok and they gotcha. deleted her Instagram because mm -hmm. she was young. Cause I just wanted her. I didn't want her to be exposed to none of that stuff. Yeah. Like it's a crazy, and I don't feel like explaining t certain topics with her. I just wanted to be a kid. Right. You know, yeah. go to school, yeah. learn, be a kid, and um, and like sports and all that. Like right mm -hmm. now, my pop like yo put her in sports and all that. But I just I just wanted to be a kid. I wanted to enjoy being a kid. And when it's time for her to stick to something, yep. then I'm be like, all right, it's time to go. It's time. Yeah. It's not, we now, now it's like go time. Yeah. And right now, I don't, I'm not ready for her to be on go time. I'm the same way, I want to be a kid, enjoy mm -hmm. life, man. It's just like, cause yeah, you'll never you, get these years back. Yeah, but you, you gotta play sport. You wanna take And it's different. Say, well, but it's, take, it, no, yeah, it's different girl. for her than me. Like mm -hmm. me, it was different because I was like, yo. We was I'm, outside. I'm like, like it was going to public school and all that is oh, yeah. crazy. You feel mm -hmm. me? So it was yeah. like and temptations, walking home, drugs, um, all everything. You mm -hmm. feel me? Got so my mindset shit. is way different. She go, she go to a nice school, private school. She you, she don't see no bad it's stuff. A different world. So her mindset is so clean, and yep. I want to keep her like that. Yeah. And sports and all that is you could be. 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. Yeah. There's always time. She's seven years old. So I just yeah. wanted to have a did good childhood. Did you it. see the video me and Danny did like a couple days ago? Is like, that the one where like y'all was 1980s? Like, yeah. 19, yeah, I just yeah, seen that. Yeah, you know, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. I just the, seen that. It was that. like, you know, uh -huh. not too cool. But. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> she I didn't have that. an idea what we was doing. For real? She didn't have an idea. And like yesterday, we brought her to the gym. She jumped off for two rounds, threw it on the floor. Like, that's a good thing. That right now, a everything's thing. a blur to her. Like, the other day, yesterday, we brought her to the gym. She walked in, did two, like, two ropes and threw it on the floor and left. I said, oh, I don't feel like doing this. Mm. Like, <laughs> Pop-Pop's Pop, Pop getting on my nerves. And I'm like, He's yo, don't worry me. about me. Worry about uh, you. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you feel me? She don't understand. Yeah, yeah. but you, it's so true. Like, I was literally having this conversation with the kids yesterday. I said, mm -hmm. I said to Daryl, Daryl was 12. I said, you only got uh -huh. six more years until you're officially yeah. an adult, right? Don't yeah. Doesn't mean I'm kicking no, you out right. the house. No, you're right. Yeah. I'm not going to kick you, ever Just kick you out deep. the house. Mm -hmm. But you got six more years. I said, Tyler, mm -hmm. you got eight more years. Yeah. 
enjoy your childhood now yeah, that, that, because yeah. once that's gone and i wish yeah. I, I i mean i understand like we used to always you know as kids yeah. i can't wait until i turn 18. No, you're right man if only i really appreciated my my my, Listen, my bro, childhood i right. wish i could go back 13. Bro. i love my childhood yeah, i love my I tell childhood people this all the time the best part about everything was the journey yes man it's the best yeah. part about everything because once <laughs> it becomes strictly that. business it's like it becomes a headache and mm -hmm. that was like tick for tag. Oh, he trying to get me this way. He trying. Mm -hmm. It's like all negotiations and everything is just not love no more. Right. It's yeah, just right. like straight up. And who can get over who? Everybody got their hands yeah, up. Yeah, like, who can get over play, who? It's like, like it's back. In, we played in old houses, tagging them. There was no phone when I was raised. Right. We didn't and, have phones. And, and I so ran. Later. I ran around barefoot in mm -hmm. Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Like I was born like really poor. Like, but like your, poor, poor, poor. Right. Right. Like my mom was making sixty dollars a week in America when she came to America in the factory working forty hours a week. Wow. When my grandma went to retire, my my you know my mm -hmm. my mom, um, our mother, mom, yeah, yeah. your mom and my mom, yep, uh, mom. mother, grandma, yep, your great grandma, mm -hmm. mommy Camila. When, yeah, when she went to retire, she worked in a, in a sugar cane fields in Puerto Rico. That's when Puerto Rico was in Americanized yet. Mm. Like it is today, it's right, Americanized. Right, right. It's totally different now. It was no, it was no public assistance for no government. No, Puerto Rico was on their own, selling right. sugar to this. That. They had sugar cane field. My grandma worked in the sugar cane field, taking water to the workers. Wow. And the patrones, that's the owners. Mm -hmm. They would take her their taxes and they would keep it. When she went to retire, she didn't have no tax pay. Oh wow. She didn't have no social security. She had no money in the social security system because they had stole all the money. That's crazy. Imagine that. Imagine that. Mm. How hard our families had it. Yeah. The reason we ended up in, in Philadelphia was because our uncles yeah. end up coming here to immigrate them farms right there in Jersey. But out of all places, why Philly though? Why, because why, why didn't they go to Jersey because, then? No, because, because, because they have Cheaper programs. cost of living problem, oh, no, right? Yeah, at the time, That's what most people do. Yeah, no, but yeah. at the time, Philadelphia was known like a small city, hillbilly city. Okay. So Philadelphia was known for like a quiet city. So the farmers would have the buses come out to Philly because that's where the Latinos were at. Got you. So Latinos came to New York and Chicago at the time. Okay. So when you went to Puerto Rico, a lot of people went to New York or Chicago. Mm. No, not everybody came to these small cities. So these were the small cities where you could like- A lot more opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Got you. More jobs. And there was a lot of factories here. Okay. Philadelphia was known for that clothes factories, yep. toy factories. Like, all know in Philly, all them warehouses were all that factories. That was all factories. Now they yeah. all like condos and no, stuff. No, no, yeah. So they're, they're all gone because China, they moved them to China. Yep. Like, so that's how we ended up in Philadelphia. Mm. Our family was farmer, work, hard worker, labor, hard labor workers. Mm -hmm. That's how we end up here. Mm. So that you know hard, what I'm saying? That so hard you got to understand that Puerto Ricans were ain't nothing given to them. Right. So I hate when people say, oh, Puerto Ricans bring, they will live on welfare. They live, no, no, no. That's a lie. Mm hmm we had a hard in this country. And we worked hard in this country for our freedom too, like everybody else got freedom. We was bullied too as, as racism and all that shit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's crazy. You got, you got someone up there, right? Albizo Campo. Right? Yeah, right Albizo there. Campo was revolutionary. First Harvard there. graduate. Yeah, Puerto man, yeah. I love that, man, because he was, um, he was supposed to give the valid, valedictorian speech and they wouldn't allow him to do that yeah. because of his color. Exactly. Yeah, and, and then um, when he was in Puerto Rico trying to fight for independence, the government yeah, ended up, up. Uh, they set him, him up yeah. and they started doing experiments and he ended yeah. up passing away early. Well, no, they injected him with cancer. Oh, cancer, that's, that's what it was. The yeah. federal government. Did. Yeah, man. Because so, back then, people don't know. A lot of people, like when they were using the in World War II, mm -hmm. before they started using the the uh, gas muscle, what they call that for the muscle, the gas uh, in war, the, um, they used it in World War II. Talk about uh, uh, the muscle gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mustard, you know? mustard, mustard. Yeah, that. Yeah, the gas. yeah, yeah. They yeah. were they were dropping that shit in New York City in the subway. The, the Secret Service testing it. All the social it experiments. Yeah. It's but crazy. people don't know. But a lot of shit that in America what happened to a lot of Latinos too, mm -hmm. like World War Two, hundred and fifty thousand Latinos died in World War Two. Mm. Frontliners. Wow. Okay, nobody that's talks true. about them. Yeah, that's true. They don't even get a day. Yeah. <laughs> Like uh, for the veteran, the Puerto Rican veteran right. died World War Two. That's crazy. You know man. what I'm saying? No, I but feel you know it. we live in a world like that. We live in a crazy world right now, brother. Well, talk talking about crazy world, right? Eminem released a song. Mm -hmm. Put your name in it. Oh yeah. How do you feel about that, man? I mean, the goat I'm not himself. Gonna lie. When Eminem said my name, 
I kind of couldn't believe it because not where, that I'm a where, where, okay. Not where, that I'm des- like describe the ex- describe when you first initially well found out. My friend was like, "Yo, I think Eminem said your name in a song," and I was like, "For real?" I was like, "Send it to me." Right. So he sent me the lyrics to the song of Danny Garcia. I was like, "Oh yeah, he talking about me?" Because he said, "Boxing with all my demons, Danny Garcia." That's crazy. Yo, I was like, "Yo, like, I don't even care when rappers say my name, but Eminem was like different because that's like Biggie, that's like Tupac, that's like Michael Jackson." Bro. Yeah, yeah. so I was like, like "Yo, out of all the people in the world, he was thinking about me." So I was like, "Yo, that's love." And out of all the boxes, he was yeah. thinking about you. Think about yeah, it. Right, hundreds right, upon yeah. hundreds of boxes, he thought right, about right, you. Right, right, right. And remember, I wasn't even active at that that's time. That's true. I didn't fight for a year and a half. That's a year crazy. and nine months. So, but think about so it. So it's man. not like he was watching the Danny Garcia video or some. You feel me? It's just mm-hmm. like that should show you like yeah. my name is solidified in the boxing world. Your name is like solid- I'm a legend in the boxing world. Yes, and he you knows are. that and he recognized that. Not so only that was that. like real recognized real. Not only that, but he said box what you said boxing with all my demons. Boxing with all my demons. Boxing with all my demons. Yeah. You was boxing with all your demons yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think yeah. about how that connects oh, you. Right, right, right. That's crazy, man. So but he comes with Danny man. Bars and I'm Danny Gar. See ya. <laughs> now, I, now I say that to people, I'll be like, Danny Garcia. Look, I'm talking to Yo, that was so dope. Man, Eminem said my name in a song. Man. I'm out. The price went up. They can't even the afford price, me no more. They, they can't even afford. Like, me, yo, it's like that's like that's like the stamp. That's the stamp of the stamp. I'm stamp. That's all you need, I'm man. Stamp. I'm in the I'm in the books. Yeah, that's all. I ain't you nothing need. else. No, I, I don't even care. Yeah, bro, I don't care about video nothing. Video that? Uh, no, I'll, that was the soundtrack. That was the soundtrack to the Elvis movie. Oh, okay. So he probably did, but I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> I'm so stamped. I'm stamped. I'm so, stamped. So right I'm now, stamped. right? So right Ain't now, nothing else for nothing else to say. You don't need nothing else. <laughs> so right now, Kanye West, right? He's all over the news because of things that he's saying. Some of which a lot of people disagree with. Some yeah. of which does make sense. Yeah. But nonetheless, there's a big censorship going on right now where right. people are getting taken off of social media platforms because yeah, of things that they're down. saying. They yeah. took him down, right? Yeah, they took him his down. His Twitter and his uh, IG. Well, they took the Drink Champs interview down. But they but... took his Instagram and the IG and Twitter. Oh, they did? Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't know about that. That's why he bought the new app. But censorship is real big, right? Right. Brother, you've been no. getting censored. No, you're okay, right. Okay, now let's talk about that, right? Yeah. So, I'm going to be honest. Mm-hmm. When you watched a Danny Garcia show, yeah. you got your popcorn out for the press conference. Yeah, Because exactly. you know... It was yeah. gonna be fireworks exactly. in the beginning. That's that was the buildup, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. That was the buildup. Now the dynamic duo yeah. that y'all have is you put in the work physically, he puts in the work yeah, mentally. Exactly. So he he breaks them down in the yeah. beginning. Right. Mentally. You, your mouthpiece is, is spectacular. No, you and know, I, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say this, man. I'm a quick you thinker. told, listen, you told Zab. If I had his mouthpiece, I would come walk the street. <laughs> I'd be a mega star. Listen. I'd be like Michael Jackson. You you told Zab Judah. Take his Janet Jackson yeah, hat off. Cause I kept looking at him. Right. Looking like Janet Jackson. You told hat. Amir Khan to get back on his carpet. Yeah. Back to, uh, <laughs> uh, you told uh, you told you told Keith Thurman ponytail boy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man, this man, what's going on with and then you? Then I bro? called Khan's father, Chicklet. Because <laughs> he had a big ass guy, and I kept seeing him at the prayer. He was standing like right there, and I'm looking at. This guy's like chicklets. But listen, but like, listen, chicklet, chicklet. But overall, but listen, overall, and I think I think there's yeah. a logo of you somewhere where in one of the videos you basically said, "Las Vegas don't know uh, know what they talk you nothing. nothing. You don't know nothing. I know, I know everything. everything." Yeah. That's what what gave like, you that confidence? Because they had me as the underdog, yeah. and I was the champion. Exactly. Mm. So he was like, they don't know what the hell they oh, do. This when he, this when you was fighting Lucas Matisse? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was the unified world champion. So you felt like, now be honest, yeah. did you feel the pressure like everybody's attacking us like well, we nobody? Like yeah, that, yeah, yeah, remember, yeah, I think so. I think like, so. Like, I told him, I'm sorry, no, yeah. I'm sorry. That's cool. We need that mouthpiece. No, you're right, but the thing is, Daryl, about that is, when you you just said, it does feel like that. It's like you being in a place and everybody's praying. Mm. And the prayer is just too strong. Mm. And your voice is like this little. So that's what it felt like. So that's when you should like, start snapping. You know, it felt like my voice was just, I had to bring my win. voice bigger. Like, I had to beat the odds. The only people who thought he was going to win was us. Yeah. yeah. You destroyed I think people him. on my own team and friends wouldn't even think I was going to win. Bro, you destroyed him. They would ask me. That was my favorite fight. And I was like, I love all money. your fights. That was my favorite. Yeah. That was, somebody just knocked him. Nah, oh, I thought the camera shut off. Um, no, that was me. My <laughs> yeah. That was me. No, yeah, Daryl. That boy hearing you, stuff. Yeah, he I, I couldn't believe it because you know why I was so angry? Mm-hmm. Because Danny was WBC champion, WBA super champion. Super is like, all these belts they got now, but he was the super me at the top. The guy. Right. He was ring my, ringside magazine champion. Mm-hmm. 
And then when they send the magazines out, they send WBC send magazines out okay. through all the champions. All the champions the, the, in the middle of the magazine. Yep. You see all the champions from little weight all the way to heavyweight. Okay. All the champions like that with their belt. Right, right. So when they got the 140, because that was 140, mm -hmm. Walter Weight. When they got the 40, they had Danny and Matisse. Oh. Yeah. So I was like, what the fuck is this? So they already was counting you out. Yeah, yeah so I was mad. So they was already shit. preparing. They had his he was not even the champion. Yeah. You know, when you win the belt, you don't get the belt right there. They shit, they mail it to you. Yeah, they already had his they belt had with his belt on it. So they was already preparing to put him as the yeah. champion. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, well them belts so are clearance now. So no, they because... try to give us to them. We ain't even want them. No, they do belong to you. So when I, at the end of the fight, I was like, I want all them fucking belts right there, brand new. Mm -hmm. They was like, but you got belts already. When you, when you beat the champion, you take pictures with your belts. Oh, okay. So you the champ, and I beat you. They give me your belt for pictures from the ring and all that. Right, then I right. give them back. And when I go in the back of the lago, they send them back to you. Because that's your belt. Then they oh. mail you the belt. Then they okay. mail you the belt. They had his belts ready. Yeah. Mm. D, talk I to in front of my... I'm sorry. Yeah, they had his belts ready. Mm. That's the first time in boxing So they were history. already prepared. The only time they got a belt ready is when it's a vacant belt. Then he's okay. not a champion. I'm not a champion. Vacant belt yeah. on the sideline. So they were already preparing to groom him to be the champion. Yeah, his oh, belts were have. right there ringside. Yeah. Anybody who knows about boxing, yeah. you take pictures. If you win the fight, they you take, you take pictures with my belts. You use my yeah. belts. Like when Thurman got the victory over me, he took pictures with my, my belt. Yeah, the then they mailed him his, his belt. They mailed him his belt. Got gotcha, you. You feel me? But this... Um, they had his ready, and I and I had all the belts. Wow. Yeah. And he was his a, name on and everything. And you gotta understand, he was knocking anybody out. Yeah, but didn't you say it was cab drivers? You're right. They were cab drivers <laughs> for the people. For the, oh, for the people, it looked no, good. For, for, it looked for the good. Boxing he knocked world. out Lamont Peterson though, so that's not. I'm saying that's right. Yeah, that's no, true. you're right. Yeah. But but I'm saying for the for the for, you gotta understand the way the boxing is like any sport. It's like mm -hmm. the NFL. The NFL will sell you all these athletes like top of the line guys, and I understand they are top of the line. Right, of course. And then they saw you like your image. So if you, if you were like come from a Christian family, they start selling you like a Christian guy. But you're really not a Christian guy. Right. But they doing it for the brand. It's mm. all about the brand. Right, right. So basically, they're not worrying about you. They're looking already 10 years in back of you, the next yeah. generation of fighters. Yeah, they want the NFL going to be around forever. Dude, yeah. when, when your dad started snap, when, when he first started snapping on people, first of all, we've known him mm -hmm. since young. I got home videos yeah, of yeah, you yeah, no, snapping right. at yeah. 22 years no, old. No, you're right, yeah. You've been snapping been all your life. And partying, right, right, and partying, right? It was a good time, man. <laughs> Good time. It was but, good time, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> it mean, me and your mom, your dad. Yeah, that's it. Everybody just, just chilling in the around. house. Y'all all just chilling in the house, just no, drinking and enjoying. Running around. Right, that's and it. That was, I mean, that was the best times, man. Best times. But D, from early on, your father snapping on everybody. Were you like, Dad, man, calm down? Or were you like, yeah, I need, you know what, Dad, get into their minds because I'm going to destroy them physically? Like, like, what was going on with you when your dad was... Are you, you speak, know. you speaking like as a kid or are you speaking like just as, overall as, 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 at the, the press conferences? Room. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like when he was doing that in your head, was you like, man, this is embarrassing, or was you like, yeah, keep on doing it? The only one time it caught me off guard, the first one, like, uh, we was fighting the Nick guy, Kendall, Kendall Hawk, Kendall Hawk, yeah, Kendall Hawk. Okay. And he went up there and started snapping. And I was like, he caught me off guard. Even Bernard Hopkins was like, yo, he chill, OG. Like, He's like, chill, <laughs> chill. He was like, chill, OG. And I was like, oh, shit, caught me off guard. But then after that, I was like, you know what? Hell with it. He I... was icing everybody. Yo, at oh, yeah. this point, then I was like, <laughs> what was next the after ball. that? After that, um, the next one, I think the next one he snapped was Amir Khan. Amir Khan was, uh, was, 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 was legendary. That was a classic. Oh, you snapped the classic. Morales too a little bit too because he got yeah, mad. But it wasn't that bad. Oh, because he had steroids in the system? No, no the, the first one. one. The first one. Oh, the first one. Okay. Yeah, 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 the first one he snapped a little bit. What isn't that bad? But then the Amir Khan one, that shit was funny. And then after that, I was like, you know what? Let him do his thing. I'm not going to listen to other people, bro. If right. that's how you want to be, fuck mm -hmm. it. Do it. Yep. And that's what happened. I, I just you be know, quiet. The Zab Judah Jones. Because this is him every day. Yeah. So I'm like, PBC shut me down with the mic. No, I, I, you said who? PBC. Oh, they PBC. Oh, they did. Yeah. What Was it because of like sponsorships? Like no, they felt it was because they said well, because that. You got to understand, it's, yeah. on, it's on regular TV. It was on yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not okay, premium TV. It's supposed to be family friendly. Exactly. And all that stuff. So you, it made you. complete sense. Yeah, yeah. You got to yeah. do up there talking crazy. You don't know where you're going to come from. We got to protect our brand at yeah. the end of the day. So I, and you, and you can't even be mad at it at the end of the day. You feel me? One of, I was mad. But he was mad. No, I know. I know. You take it You take it all personally. No, you read the guy. What the fuck? Listen. No, it's like wrestling. No, but not for what nothing sells? though. You know, not right. for nothing though. Oh, controversy. No. You got the but, you got the good guy. But not for nothing though. 
No trainer was speaking after old hit. Like they, they never all, let they no one. It, down, it was just fighters. That's it. Yeah. Hmm. So that was kind of. But good. also now a lot of fathers are doing it. Oh yeah, I and did see that. A lot of them look up to me because they call call me and I motivated them. Yeah, you a legend. Yeah, exactly. You you a legend. No, now, let like, me tell you. Yeah. What what was hilarious, man, was the whole Zab Judah joint because I think Zab, yeah. you know, I shout out to Zab no, Judah. He's doing no, his he's thing. A great and all the box, yeah, yeah, all yeah. the boxes was great. You know, person, it was business. But what happened was, I guess when you're coming in fighting. You know, a person like him, you know, a legend, you yeah. know, technically he's a legend, right? He's a good fighter. And you treated him as if he was a nobody, right? Well, cause, because I, because what happens, Daryl, is that. But Zab was, feet, Zab was ready too, though. He was running down us all, oh, Brooklyn, me and Models. He, he was one. running that. No, yeah. the Models one. He put us in the listen, lobby. Listen, that was, was real. I'm like, oh, Zab on Demon Time. Zab wanted to fuck us up. Listen, <laughs> what was hilarious <laughs> was when y'all was at Models and they came in. Y'all wasn't backing down. No, fuck no. You definitely wasn't backing no, down. You was flipping tables yeah. and chopping. No, was you no, chopping no, them no, down. No, you no, had no, the hand no, coming yeah. down. You was chopping tables no, yeah. down. Yeah, fuck that. You wasn't playing no games, no, bro. No, because we from Philly, bro. We from Philly, yeah. man. You was doing your thing. Bro, <laughs> his <laughs> friend, <laughs> yo, half of his friends, I didn't I'm, mention no name. Uh -huh. They were taking their jackets off with DSG and hiding them. No way. <laughs> <laughs> No way. They had him on video. You know, people were taking yeah, that yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They you was taking them off. taking the jacket wow. and folding them up. Oh, shit. We ain't got nothing to do they with that. They ain't around no more, I would hope, right? <laughs> they not around no, no more. No, definitely. Who is your personal top five all-time boxes? Um, I'm going to just say top five. No, or, no order, though. Okay. I like Bernard Hopkins. Um, Roberto Duran. Mm -hmm. Uh, Felix Trinidad. Um, so that's three. Yeah, those are my top three right there. Okay. Then I might have to go with. I like. I like Prince Nassim Ahmed. I like he was a okay. showman. He was a showman. Mm -hmm. And then um, Danny Garcia. I got to put myself hey, in man, there. You, you got to put yourself in there, man. What about you? Well, I'm gonna go old school in the 1800s. Um, Jack Johnson, right there. Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson, one of the big heavyweights. He, that guy was uh, with, at the time. It was, it was scheduled for fifty rounds. Fifty rounds. Fifty rounds. Yeah, the middle, uh, the baseball field at twelve o'clock. It started with no campus, and uh, wow. And by four o'clock, he was still fighting. He went the most rounds ever, twenty-five rounds. Wow. Yeah, Jack Johnson. So I go with him as a heavyweight, okay. eighteen hundreds. Okay. So people, I like, say, you wasn't even born eighteen hundreds. Right. But I watch his videos. I like yeah. him. And then I would say. Uh, uh, I would say uh, Danny, mm -hmm. Danny, one of my favorite fighters. Alexi Arguello, because he was humble like Danny, and he mm -hmm. could fight his ass off. Uh, and then I would have to say Camacho. I would have to put Camacho in there, because mm -hmm. Camacho was a great fighter. Yep. He just, when he had to step it up to Oscar, he didn't, but it's okay. Right, right, I right. forgive him for that. Well, he's passed mm -hmm. his prime on that one. And then uh, Bernard, I got to go with Bernard. Oh, shit. Fuck the interview. No, it's all good, baby. You, know, you a busy I man. had to go with Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins? Yeah, because okay. Bernard Hopkins, I've knew Bernard for a long time. Gotcha. Like years and years. He's a legend, be, too, man. Yeah, exactly. Nah, he definitely. Probably, arguably the yeah. best fighter that ever lived to me. Yeah, man. He started in, what, well, for right? In, in, yeah, in jail, prison. right? He started yeah. in prison. That's crazy, he man. He started with Shorty. Shorty used to train in that, in that team. For real? At he was a 132 champion. Oh, wow. Zeke. Marty's wow. brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, he used to train with Bernard in prison. He was the champion at 132. Wow. And they out there, man. So there's a, um, there's a fight coming up. Obviously, you fought one of them, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford. Um, do you have any picks on that one? That's not happening. Oh, it's well, not they happening. They just announced today that. They just announced? Terrence Crawford is fighting somebody else. Wow. Listen, I told these guys, I told a lot of media, that's not going to happen. It doesn't make sense wow. for PBC. It doesn't make sense for, for, for PBC. Right. That's what Spence is with. Now, it's ten, now, Terrence Crawford, he's not with PBC, right? No, who's he's he, with, who's he, he was with Top Rank. I, I, think, think, he's he's him I think he's a free agent right now. He's yeah, a free agent? He's, okay. he's fighting wherever he you want. Him. I think he lost a lot of money with him. Wow. So they just they just said it today that he's fighting somebody else? Yeah, yeah. Total waste? I guess. Boxing or media? Um, I could see why he did that, though. A lot of people are going to criticize him. Mm -hmm. But if the fight, if the Spence fight don't happen until, like, uh, they say in February... That means he'll be on um, the biggest layoff of his career. Spence? No. Oh, Crawford. Terrence Crawford. He'll, okay. he'll be on one of the biggest, longest layoffs of his career going to the biggest fight. Got you. So he was probably like, you know what? I'm going to take a fight. Mm -hmm. 
If we fight in February or March, I'm gonna take a fight now, so that way I ain't gonna be caught slipping. You right, feel me? Right, right. I ain't coming. I'm 35 well, years old. It said old. December. Nah, fight they ain't fighting this year. They ain't fighting this year. They said they're going to fight next top of next year. You know what I'm saying? The fight for Terrence Crawford, they say December. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So he'll fight in December. Okay. And then if they fight, do fight again, mm -hmm. he'll be ready. So I guess he didn't want to wait around. Right. But it's crazy, though, because he was negotiating two fights at the same time. That's, like, kind of tricky. Yeah, that That's what throws crazy. me off. But, hey, it's not in my business, so I don't yeah. care. Yeah, no, you're doing your thing. Yeah. Listen, it is what it is. Do you feel like, like boxing nowadays is more politics than, like, back in the day, right? Back in the day, and you can appreciate <laughs> yeah. this because you lived during an era oh, yeah. where all the, all the best, they just fought the best, oh, right? right. right? There, yeah. there wasn't no, you know, if right. you were the best, you just fought the best. Oh, right. right. What, what, what's your thoughts on today's see, boxing? See, me, to, for me, like, if you really want to yeah, fight, did, bro, if you want to fight, no, 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 if you, you want to fight to happen, it ain't hard to make a fight. Right. But the problem is some fighters ain't used to coming in on the short end. Like, sometimes you got to take the less money. Right. Sometimes you got to go in the fighter's backyard. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're not going to be the favorite. Sometimes you can't wear the gloves you want to wear. Mm -hmm. You got to wear the gloves he want to wear. Yeah. Right. Sometimes mm -hmm. you got to fight in a smaller ring. Yeah. You might want the bigger ring. ring. Like yeah. everything not going to be on your side. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you're going to get paid way. Yeah. Like sometimes, yeah, you might be a champion, but that guy's a superstar. So he going, he, he bringing the tickets in. He's the bigger draw. Yeah. You, 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 ain't doing, you ain't you doing, you ain't doing, you're a champion, but you ain't doing numbers. Right, right. So sometimes I think fighters put in their mind where they, they, they feel like, all the, everything has to, to be carpet, in their, yeah. everything has to be in their favor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They they go with that A side B side shit like that, that really don't matter. If you really feel like you could be somebody, yep. if you know you could beat that person, like when I fought Amir Khan, like I knew I was getting paid nothing where he was getting paid. Right, exactly. of course. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna beat him and then I'm gonna get paid because I believe in myself. That was your milestone fight. Yeah. So it was like I you, remember exactly where I yeah. was during that time. But keep on. So talking. as a fighter, if you know you could beat somebody, mm -hmm. you're gonna beat him because you. It's just like everything not gonna be in your favor. You really want a fight to happen? It ain't hard to make a fight. Right, right. You feel me? Yeah. You might not get what you want, mm -hmm. but that's in life. That's period. You're not always gonna get what you want. Right. Sometimes you gotta come on on the short end of the stick and then win. Well, I mean, that's the way you came up. And if yeah. you don't win, fuck it. At least you try, and your resume still good. Yeah. You lost it's to like another great we, fighter like you. Yeah. It's like when Danny Ford spent. We we went to Texas because America was shut down, mm -hmm. and we went out there it was twenty percent open at the stadium. Dallas Cowboy State. Oh yeah, that's true. So we flew out there, and, so I fought, and Daddy I, was suffering from when anxiety. I, when, at I the time. Spence, I fought, when I fought Spence, I fought when, when I fought bro? Spence, I, I fought him all his, like basically his terms. Yeah, you know his hometown. He was the champion. Yeah. It's cool. He was the champion, but I had the name. Right, you right. Feel me? So I could have demanded a lot more. But the circumstances, you feel me? It's COVID. Mm -hmm. Nothing's open. Let's just do it. Let's fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, at the yeah. end of the day, at the, my mind says, like, once I'm in that ring, I really don't care where I'm at. Right. I know I could beat you. Right. You feel me? Describe the feeling, right? Now that we're talking about, you know, the, 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 the integral parts of boxing, right? Describe the feeling because I, I've been in the back. I've been, in, you know, in the locker room with you, you know, in the past. And you're very quiet. You're very in the zone. Right. What's going through your mind mentally? Are you nervous? Are you... Mike Tyson said that he would be scared to death before he got <laughs> into the ring. And then after that, he turns into a guy, right? Right, right. Is that the same way with you? Like, what's going on in your mind before you jump into a Well, you got to understand, like it's a thin line between nervous and scared. Okay. Like, some people don't even know the difference. Yeah. Describe I'm the difference. I'm not scared. I'll tell you that. All right. No, no, no. No, no, no. What you mean. No, no. But it's no. like you a huge... scared what's going to happen. No. Right. Yeah. Right. So... Scared All right, nervous is, nervous yeah. is, you're nervous because obviously you're about to fight. Yeah. You're about to fight, so, um, but you know you're ready, so you're not scared. Got you. Because you're prepared. Yeah. Right. But nervous is like, scared is like, damn. I, I don't want to be in I bit on this. I don't want to like, mm -hmm. yeah. right, right. I shouldn't even be here tonight. You feel right, me? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. You feel exactly. me? Yeah. So I'm ne I always feel nervous, but I'm never, ever, ever scared. Got you. Because... I know I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Like I, I know it. Like I look in the mirror. I'm like I've been here before. I always, I always feel like this. Right. I know what's making me feel like this. The only mm -hmm. reason why I feel nervous right now because I'm about to fight. Right. As soon as I get in that ring, it's over. Yeah, exactly. So that's my mindset. Right. So you got to know the punch. difference. Okay. And a lot of people, they don't know the difference. That's why they get scared. How do you build just It's crazy because because some people think nervous is scared. Yeah. Like they nervous. They they say themselves why they get scared of shit. Right. Right. Because they under pressure. They burn in the fire. No, you that's so me? true. Yeah. So how do you um how do you how do you strengthen yourself mentally? Because obviously when you're about to go into a fight, mm -hmm. 
It's either fight or flight, right? You got right. some people that when they about to go into it, they, they run away from it. And then right. you got some that attack it head on. They go in to defend mm -hmm. themselves. How do you build yourself mentally? How do you make yourself mentally strong I think it's just to jump you, into something like this? I think it's just who you are, to be okay. honest. You Like some people mentally strong, some people are not. Yeah, you got it. Mm -hmm. Like I know a lot of people who can fight, got hands, yeah. bro. And like they're in the gym, there's no pressure. They looking great. They phenomenal, beautiful. Mm -hmm. When the then, light come on. When the shit count. And the, they melt. the headgear come off and the pressure and they, it is just not built for it. Mm. Mm. Like I tell people this, right? Mm -hmm. Like I could give, like say if you was a boxer, right? Mm -hmm. I could give you the same formula. I, like I could give you the same formula that I had right. to go to the top. Same way. I'm going to move you the same exact way. Mm -hmm. I could give you this blueprint, everything, right? But I could give it to you, but you might not be built like me. Mm. You feel me? Right, right, right. So like that's the main difference is like some people just not built. Like, some people not built. Mm. They not built for it, bro. They just not. Like, no matter how good you are, it's you just like, your, men men it's like your, men your mentality is like... You gotta have a gladiator spirit. Yeah, it's just like... Strong. You gotta really, really believe in yourself that you can do... You can really win, like... Right. You know, and half these kids, like, they just beat themselves before they even go in the ring. It's a mental yeah, You gotta know how to get over that, huh? So it was like... Mm -hmm. One thing I learned, man, it's a, it's, a, it's a job for everybody out here. You know why? Because I realized, like, one of the time I was off before I was fighting, I was like, my purpose on this earth is to fight. Right. Yeah, it's dangerous, but everything in the world is dangerous. So you just put no, yourself right. in there. My purpose, like, I'm a fighter. Right. I noticed that. I come in here, I beat somebody's ass. This is what mm -hmm. I do for a living. That's my purpose. Yep. Because when I was in Florida, and I try to shovel four rocks in the back, <laughs> I threw the rock. I try to do that shit myself and save uh -huh. some money. Uh -huh. I almost blew my back on four shovels. One, two, three, four, sweating bullets, 100 degrees outside. Cause I didn't want to pay the landscaper out his money, <laughs> so I'm thinking I could do this shit myself. Right, right, right. I yeah. fucking I went and bought the wheelbarrow, the shovel, everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> that shit's still right over I there. I did four rocks. I threw that shit away. I called him. I said, "How much you want again, bro?" Matter of <laughs> fact, I give you 500 on top right now. If you come do that, and shit. I get your wheelbarrow with it. <laughs> exactly. So one thing I learned. It's a job for everybody. It's a job for, and everybody's made for something. That's so true. Everything's hard. You just get paid different. Right? No, it's so Everything true. is hard, man. So, Everything the is hard. The hardest job is here, though, believe it or not. Uh, but, like, it but, hey, but as you see, like, I wasn't built, I wasn't mentally built for, like, for anything else. To do something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yep, Not only yep, rock, but I'm mentally <laughs> built yeah. to come in here and fight. It's like riding a bike for you. Exactly. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's a mindset. It's like whatever your mind is built for. I never realized, so I started studying a whole lot more of the, the science of boxing, right? And mm -hmm. you really don't, you know, you just think when you have people in the ring, they just throwing punches, right? Wow. But you don't realize everything that goes into it. Footwork, right. the right. way you maneuver your body. Right, Everything, right. the way you cut the ring off. There's a, a huge science right. behind yeah, it. And the most important thing, you, you know what it is, dog? Listen, you got to listen. But yep. you get reminded. Like, you get reminded how hard this is. Like, when my, I told you my daughter came here and she don't know how to jump rope. Mm -hmm. Just jump a rope is a science. I know people who don't even know how to get in the ring. Yeah. Well, I try, I try getting into Bro, the ring with the chairs. Get, it's look, a little difficult, that, man. Getting in the yo, you getting in the boxing ring is a science. <laughs> right, right, right. Get, walk, going in between those ropes and coming in here is a science. Making sure you, you don't ever trip. saw that Instagram video as a meme. The guy didn't know how to get in, so he just rolled underneath. <laughs> yeah, I did. I God, see that. At the so time of like, emotion, when you're in the ring and you and you fighting, everything is like a vision, like a blurry vision. Mm. So you don't know, like you don't remember anything. When you're especially you get into the motion, right? It's the uh, it's yeah. the um, what like, is it the um. Like you don't uh, like your, your vision is blurry, bro. Like you only see the guy. It's in front tunnel of you. vision. You get yeah, tunnel exactly. vision like because the, you know that game? your adrenaline. But as you get older, though, you you learn how to enjoy every second of it. Mm. Like I knew what I was doing every second of the fight. Like every time I fight, I know what I'm doing every second of the fight. Mm -hmm. It's like when you're younger, your, your adrenaline's pumping, and you go in there and start going for the gusto and all that. Right. You kind you kind of like fighting off in, like younger instinct, and because yeah. you're strong, you arrogant and all that. Yep. But as you get older, you kind of learn how to like the science of the game. All right, I'm going to throw the jab here. He's going to do that. I'm going to catch him. Boom. Gotcha. So everything is just like timing. You, you're picking them apart now because yeah. you're so seasoned. Yeah. Like, that's what I did my last fight. I'm like, there's no way. Like, I'm, I'm just going to beat this guy up all skill. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And that's what I did. In the very beginning. Because I knew that every, anything he did, I was going to have an answer for it. Right. And what I had, the, tri the tricks I had on my sleeve, he wasn't going to have an answer for it. Mm. And that's all based off of the experience. Yeah, it's all experience. Like, now it's just like. In the very beginning, are you studying them the first round just to see the way they maneuver, just to see, you know, their timing with regards to punches? Like, what are you looking at in the very beginning before you actually engage in battle? Um, I want to feel kind of his strength. Okay. Like, I want to see, I want to feel like his power a little bit. And then I kind of, and then I kind of want to um, figure out like his timing a little bit. 
Once I figure out your timing and I know you can't hurt me, then I'm just going to work my magic. Gotcha. But if then if I got to be more cautious, all right, he got a little pop. Mm -hmm. Let me try to take his power away. Let me start jabbing him to the body, mm -hmm. making yep. him a little tired, Had holding him up, you know, mm -hmm. making it rugged. And then it's just like, That's it. we're just figuring it out. <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but, it, but, it, but, it, but it takes a lot of hard work in studying the game. To really go in there and really beat somebody like that. Like the way Floyd beats his opponents, right. that's a lot of like chess. Psychological. Mm -hmm. He studies the game. He might not yeah. say it, but he goes and he watches boxing. Mm. He's in the gym. He's learning off people. You feel me? And that just makes you a great when you when you, you gotta be an all around fighter. You feel me? Right. Like you gotta really study the game. You gotta study the and greats. Picking them too. Picking you gotta study opponents. the greats. Mm. You gotta study everything. You gotta master picking, everything. Picking your opponents so, very important. Being a boxer. That's a mandatory. Thing. Right. Being a boxer is one thing. Being a trainer is a completely different thing. Oh, it is. How do you, how do you train Danny? Well, Are I you studying him. a lot of tape? Like, like well, what's going I on? don't watch other people's tape. I okay. watch him. Because okay. what happens is by me watching you, I'm not getting none out of that. I can't, I can't stop you. Right. But I can tell him what he's doing wrong. Okay. So a lot of trainers, that's where they go wrong, and they focus on the opponent. I don't focus on the opponent. I focus on Danny. Hmm. I focus on my camp where I got control at. Like, I'm hopeless over there. I can't stop them from jumping rope and, right. I mean, eating rocks or jumping to the moon. Mm -hmm. That's their business. I can't feed off of that. Right. I got to make sure my camp is 100. Okay. Well, we're not worrying about them. We're worrying about him. Right. So that's where my mind's at. Hmm. And then he got to listen. It's very... Because what happens, the older you get, the more stubborn you get. And that's facts. Yeah. Because when you be with your girl, you lost... And she tell you, Bobby, you lost. You be like, no, no, I got it, mommy. Mm -hmm. Bobby, you lost. Two hours later, mommy, you know I'm lost, right? She said, yeah, Bobby, I told you two hours ago. Right, right. So guys get stubborn. Us guys, the older we quest. get. That's map quest. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, they don't have that shit no more. Lost no, more wait. no, you're right. They still get you lost. <laughs> that's your phone. No, just take you to a <laughs> you dead end. Print out the that's him on map quest going on the shore. <laughs> so take boxing is about listening even if you get older. You still have to listen. Makes sense. Because what happens is I'm your eyes outside the ring. So when you in there, like I told you, blurry vision and all that, yep. you don't see a lot of shit that I see, so you got to learn how to trust me. Right. Because if there's no trust, and mm -hmm. I tell you jab, and you, or you say, fuck the jab, I ain't doing the fucking jab, yeah, yeah, yeah. then that's a problem to me, because now you're being a stubborn. You're, you're being, not listening to You're it. making the job harder for me. Yeah. So that's why you got to spar and all that, so, so you got to be a good listener. You got to listen till you die, Daryl. Mm -hmm. No, that's A true. man learn till he dies. Imagine that shit. Mm -hmm. And if you're not so learning, wisdom is free, you take it, you suck it up like a sponge, you pass it to your kids. Yeah. Because it's free, you don't have to pay shit for it. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. And yes. a man learn till he dies. A man that know everything, he don't know shit. You're right. But it's gotta make sense. Mm -hmm. If somebody say something to you, it's gotta make sense. Because if it sounds silly, you be like, I ain't doing that fucking shit. Fuck this guy. Yeah. You know, it's gotta make sense. You be like, oh, this guy really know his shit. Mm -hmm. And God worked through voices. God worked through voices. He could give you a uh, a stranger, totally stranger in the street, say something to you say, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. That guy said, damn, the light went on. You just pick up from anybody. Exactly, because God worked through voices. No, it makes sense. That's how he works. It makes sense. It's like you can have all the good answers for everything mm -hmm. to other people, but you can't solve your own problem in your own home. Yeah. But yeah, you can solve true. everybody else's problems. Yeah. You got advice for everybody That's else. That's why they say practice yeah. what you preach. Exactly. You preach. know, but the you thing is, God worked yeah. through voices. Like, not everybody going to listen, mm -hmm. but one person probably listen. That's true. Because that guy opened the ears for your voice. No, you're right. Use the answer. Mm -hmm. You're right. <laughs> so that's how life is. Listen, I want to say, I'm proud of y'all, man. Thank you, brother. I'm proud Appreciate of y'all. Y'all doing your thing. Um, I've seen y'all from the very beginning. Again, I say, I remember when you were under, uh, I think Bernard Hopkins undercard, and we were passing out your flyers in AC. And when we were passing them out, nobody knew who you were at that time. Mm -hmm. It reminded me of Knockout Kings when you first create that player. Mm -hmm. And they fighting in the gym and then they got a little crowd and then, right, you know, right. and then, oh, then, then it becomes to yeah, the yeah. point where now you a superstar, right? right? And now you a legend, you've solidified yourself. You pass away, you pass away, y'all will forever you, be in the books. Yeah. No, you're right. Y'all right. will forever That's be in the say books. legends never die. No, yep. Legends never die. Y'all yep. will forever be in the books. Think right. about that, right? No, you're right? You got so many people that when they pass away, Mm -hmm. The only time you remember them is through a tombstone. Right. And yeah. once that generation of people that knew them pass away, that's, history. It's that's it. It's done. Y'all yeah. will forever be remembered. Yeah, Danny will always be a champion the from Philly. World. Yeah, champion right. Philly. Right. And it's like, right. even in Philly, like, 
for the Puerto Ricans. Mm -hmm. Like, if there's ever be another Puerto Rican champion, they're gonna. It's always gonna be Danny Garcia. No, they 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 first. Was first. Yeah, the first. first. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna be like, yeah. who's the next after Danny Garcia? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting to see that. Yeah, but even when you're looking at the Puerto Ricans, you are up there with the Trinidad, yeah, yeah, with 100%. the you know, with the Camacho, uh, the Hector Camacho, Camacho, all, all of them. Kodo, yeah. I've done the same thing they did. Right. Yeah. And I did it from Philly, which is way harder. And, and and the crazy thing is, man, and you know, not to continue to prolong it, but you have hundreds upon hundreds, I'm going to say thousands of people that are in the gyms right now wanting to be in your shoes one day, right? right? right. But only a few get selected and very few on top of that become superstars. Right. No, you're right. And you've been able to reach all of those yeah. plateaus, right, man. Right, right, right. Despite the odds, the odds, Daryl. Crazy the odds, I would say man. this, though. If you want it bad enough, you would get it. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was people, still I don't think people are, I don't right. think people I don't think people like people think like people are chosen and all that. I don't think that's the case. I feel like if you work hard enough, no, yeah, mm -hmm. the politics will yeah, be on your anything. side. Mm -hmm. right. Because I tell all this, you never beg for support. Hard work is noticed. Right. No, so right. if you work hard enough, the right people are gonna notice you and then yeah. you're gonna become that person. Exactly. And if you keep stay loyal and keep building with them, then loyalty and it's like you always you always have your spot. Yeah. No, that's and true. good people you behind you. Because mm -hmm. politics and going against politics is hard as shit. Mm -hmm. So imagine fighting the ring and fighting politics outside the ring. Mm -hmm. I just say don't worry about so, none of that stuff. I know, bro. but I'm not worrying about it because I'm just talking to the future. One politic, one big hammer hit no, and he's over for that politics. No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly what I'm trying to say. Yes. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So imagine that. But you have to beat him like that. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to jump over here to this camera with y'all real quick, man. God bless. And it's only due to the, <laughs> the fact bird, that, man. It's only due to the fact that this joint shut off. Ah, oh, shit, we got, Listen, I don't want to cut this off, but it's been no, it's great, good. Man. Thank mm -hmm. you, bro. For sure. They awesome. They did their thing. God bless you, bro. They got all this, man. I'm proud of y'all, man. For sure. We got planes to catch, y'all. We ain't got time for the nonsense. Peace up. God bless. <laughs> triple, we triple with no luggage. <laughs> <laughs>